gonna be a little bit more informative video, a little bit of a tutorial. So it's a bit different from my other videos, but I'm gonna show you how to take a regular ordinary photo and transform it into a vintage film like quality. This is the before and after. And if you're interested to learn more, uh, keep on watching. I do use Photoshop. Uh, I don't have any other photo editing software other than Photoshop. So if you don't have Photoshop, I'm sorry, but this is what I'm working with. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get started. Yes, let's get started. So I'm going to be using two photos, for example. The first photo is... Uh, this photo that I took inside a car during a car wash and the other photo is a bit more generic I took this while I was shopping at Ikea and we have these lovely chairs so we're going to start off first with this first photo of the car wash and honestly you could start off with the basics of the brightness of the photo, the contrast I think the brightness is okay if you want to go a bit darker you can it just gives that nighttime feel which I'm going to reduce the brightness and I always like my photos to have a lot of contrast and so I'm gonna up a little bit of the contrast not that much next I go into curves now with curves I don't play a lot with but it's nice to change it just a little bit. I know with curves, it's always encouraged to go a bit extreme, but I don't. You always just play around. Usually, like I said, the curves, I don't mess around a lot like to make a drastic impact. Um, okay, um, this is where, this is where you try to create film. This is where the magic happens. And it's all in color balance. Is it color balance? Yes, it's color balance. To really get the film-like aesthetics of the colors, you want to play around with the shadows and the highlights to change the colors. Look at that. That's already looking like film. Like what? That is beautiful. We got to go red. Oh. Now I don't know. To really... I don't know which color I should go for. <laughs> that looks more scary. Like a horror film, if you want to go with that. Uh, I really like that. I think I'm going to go a little bit more cyan in the shadows. I think I'm, I'm going to be playing around with this red light that's going around and this blue contrast green color. Just because red and green are very, they're complementary colors. And then highlights, you can go in with the highlights as well. Now I see I really want to go with that highlight of the light with the red. That's a bit too much for my taste. But if I wanted to go more pink, I kind of like like I said, I'm going with the red and the green. Okay, now just be aware that I just changed the midtones. So if you want to change the highlights, you're going to have to go again with color balance and do another color balance and this time I'm going to focus on the highlights like I said I want to really bring out that red that uh, pink light You 
You can also go again and just go back to the basics that you did before, the brightness. See if that changes anything. Oh, look at that. I lowered the brightness. This is, this is very grungy, very film-like. I really like the colors in this photo. And so now, um, you can also play around with selective color, bring out different colors um, within it. So let's see, if you want to bring out more of the reds, like that. You can also change the, na the label of this, just so that you won't be confused on which one it is. So this is the red. And then I'm going to go with the grains. Look at that. That's beautiful. And you're just basically playing with color here. Um, that's all I do to try to get film like and then you go to the image go to filter noise add noise and this will give it a grainy feel to it This is my final image that I have, the final product, but um, obviously you could always go and search on Safari and search for old film filter transparencies, And but I don't really like using this way because oftentimes it doesn't look the best, and for example for this one. Uh, the IKEA chair photos. I try to do a film grain transparency, but because the size of my image and the transparency image size is smaller, I, if I enlarge it to fill the image, it becomes very pixelated. Now, unless that's what you're going for, I don't think it looks just as nice. So. You could always go the easy way and do that, but you definitely have to change the image of your size and look for um, a good film grain transparency. I personally like this way, all the edits that I did, because it really does give that vintage film-like quality, even though this is taken from an iPhone 13. So this is the final image, like I said. I hope you enjoyed this video. hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like and share. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.